All right, guys, I finally got the enclosure to a stopping point for today. Uh, it's been a long day, and I managed to get me an operational enclosure, and I was going to go over what I did, how I did it, kind of walk you through it, and everybody keeps asking me about this new camera that I got, so I was going to touch on the camera as well. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around, and we'll get into the nuts and bolts of it here shortly. guys first thing that you will notice is that it's made of wood uh, more particularly this is made out of pine and a mill off of the mill uh, these boards actually were a product of me just testing uh, my sharpening on my blade and I had laid them in my mill shop or mill shed and let them sit there and air dry and I about forgot I even had them uh, now typically if I, this was something that was going into a house I would have put the wood in the kiln and dried it on down, but since this shop technically only stays around 11% to 12% uh, moisture content in the wood, I decided to go ahead and take my chances and, and see how it holds up because worst case, if it tries to get a few little gaps in it or whatever, I can tighten it up, you know, caulk call, them or whatever I need to do, but I don't think that's going to be a problem out here, not with the humidity the way it's been being here lately. So. Starting off, uh, you'll notice that it has a Ford handle, and uh, I'm a fan of Ford. But I went for the front chopped off approach to the, to, to, to the enclosure. And the reason I did so is a lot of times if I'm sitting over here on my seat and I'm doing stuff, I still like to access the machine. And so this design allows me to still access the machine but it also allows me to have a place to permanently attach my camera. I've got my viewing camera that's a Wi-Fi compatible camera that I use to uh, check in on jobs if I go in the house to eat supper or whatever. I can take my phone, pull the app up, and watch what's going on in case the fire breaks out. I can be here in just a few seconds. Uh, also, I mounted my, my light, my little work light. I mounted it inside there. And uh, so far, I'm digging it. I did have to pop a hole over here for my air assist tube and as well as I cut a large hole here to bring the power and USB in through uh, from this side right here near my computer. Uh, also to turn it off and on you kind of have to reach in here and intentionally flip that switch which is not a bad thing. I don't have to worry about bumping the switch and cutting it off in the middle of the job because you are going to have to be reaching for it in order to hit it. So. That's pretty much the, the things on the inside. Now, you will notice, as I said, or I think I said, right now I've got wood on the front. I've just got these two little uh, 3 8 inch pieces of cypress on here just to cover up that hole so that I do have some eye protection until uh, my glass gets here. I have ordered the, the orange plexiglass and when it gets here, I will be engineering me a way to attach a piece to the front of this and it'll be open from like here to here and have a window. Uh, the pieces I got I think are 24 inches wide and 16 inches tall. So I'm thinking I'll have, I'll be able to make this into a pretty sizable little window and I'm just waiting on that stuff to get delivered. I wanted to make sure that my, my hinges and my closure system and my, my, my hold back for the closure, I wanted to make sure that it was gonna be adequate and so I added a little bit of weight with that wood I'm sure the plexiglass will actually weigh less than what that wood does. And so that means that the, the, the action of my, my closure will work. And if you haven't noticed it, or haven't figured it out yet, the way this works is that spring is, is constantly under pressure. And as this comes down, it gets more pressure here. And then once it breaks over, that, breaks over the, the, the fulcrum, so to speak, this is this is less pressure here this pulls it shut and holds it shut keeps it tight so it doesn't accidentally come open and then when you open it there's a little resistance right here and then once you get to there it pulls it back toward the back and holds it back there now these springs were substantially cheaper 
and I was able to not have to put anything on the inside here that would get in the way of my X tool going in and coming out. And so I like that approach a lot better. I just had to have these two, these two eye bolts right here or little hook bolts and the springs and there's one on each side just to make sure that my, my lid doesn't start trying to go sideways on me. But that's it for the exterior part. I have not sanded it completely. I have not painted it. I have not stained it. Literally, I just got it functional and I, I may just leave it uh, natural like this or I may go back and hit it with the torch. I may stain it. I, I don't know yet. But for now, it's going to do like be like this because I've got work backing up that i got to get caught up on and uh, I just ain't got time. But I had an incident with a customer that came over the other day and they were walking around the shop and I had something on the laser and they walk over and I catch them gazing at the laser. <laughs> Luckily, I have the shield on it and nobody, nobody got blinded, but it scared me. And so I decided, you know what? I don't know that I need it for myself, but just for the protection of others, I decided to go ahead and put something together. And so far, I only have in this enclosure uh, probably $12 for the two springs and probably another $10 worth of screws and miscellaneous parts that I had to put in here. I do need to go ahead and fix my little cable for my camera back there. I see it's dangling. But, and, but the cool part is it works and I am pleased with it so far. So the next thing that everybody's asking me about is this little camera. So I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and I'm going to bring you over here, kind of show you what's on the inside, and then I'm going to move over to the laser and kind of demonstrate the effectiveness that I have so far using this little tiny camera that is, I mean, I'm shocked. It works really well. Uh, I found it on Amazon. I did some research and uh, it works so far. One thing I will do before we get started on anything else, because I know people are going to ask and I don't want to mislead anybody or not know the answer. Let me get a measuring tape. That's not going to work. But the new camera that I have is mounted to the underside of this board right here using some 3M double sided adhesive. Alright, and so if you look from the from sitting on the honeycomb, let me get that wood out of the way. Sitting on the honeycomb to the bottom edge of that board is 18 inches. So it's right there. This is the board is mounted on. So that's going to be 18 inches right across there. Well, actually, that's on the inside. I stand corrected, guys. It's 19 and a half inches. I was on the inside of the the level here. It's 18 inches on this side. Oh my goodness, this has been a long day guys. I am tired, uh, hot, dehydrated, ready to go eat. But it's 19 and a half inches from the, the honeycomb to this board here. So if anybody asks me, 19 and a half inches from here to the surface that the camera is mounted to. Now the camera is probably a quarter of an inch from that board with the adhesive. The circuit board and the camera itself is probably down a quarter of an inch. So, so you can subtract a quarter of an inch and that's about where the lens is on this camera. So let me take this off the tripod and I'll move over here and I'm just going to go behind the camera and kind of point to everything, show you where everything is and that way I can get you a good clear picture because my new Nikon, well not new, but my Nikon camera is doing a much better job at being able to show and demonstrate things. And the microphone's supposed to be here Thursday. So, keep your finger crossed. All right, guys. I'm going to try to make sure this thing stays focused. Uh, here we are at the front of the machine. I'm just going to kind of walk you in here and let me, let me show you the, uh, why are we getting those weird little lines? My GoPro did the same thing, guys. I, I'm starting to think it's some type of electrical interference inside that enclosure. It is. Okay, well, uh, let me see if I can zoom from here. What in the heck? Maybe it's the light. Stand by. Okay, it was a light, guys. My fluorescent light is uh, messing with the cameras. But there's the uh, little camera. And it is a tiny little guy. 
tiny, tiny, tiny. That's the camera. Uh, it is very tiny. And somebody asked me, does it have autofocus? And the answer to that is yes, it does have autofocus because I noticed it earlier. That is my observation camera back there in the back. Uh, and then, of course, I've got my my X2 D1 in there, and you can see I've got my let's get her in there where you can see, guys. Wow, this is nice. I've got a double uh, double locking panel on my jig kit there, but just because I had room for it. I don't think it's necessarily the best idea, so don't try it because I may wind up going back to a single. But I just thought if one's good, two's better, and so far I'm not convinced that that is true. But <clears throat> I've got my my holders in there and I've got mine all screwed to the uh, to the table so nothing moves uh, and the vacuum table is still fully functional the only difference is it pulls all the air through here now and like I said it's not completely airtight but it works and it works pretty well so now I'm gonna move over to the computer all right guys uh, here we are I've got you going on the computer as well as the uh, turn the light back on. It's a little dark in there without that light, guys. As well as on the uh, PC here. So there is my, and you can see the camera over here to the right. So if you want to see what the laser is doing, you can do that there. So I'm going to put this guy right here in the middle. And I am going to update my overlay. And I've got this little tiny dot right here. And as you can see, this is a three millimeter dot. So, you know, if half the dot is hanging out from under the bird, that's only a millimeter and a half. And as you can see, I have made no adjustments to the X and Y shift on this. Uh, I did turn the fade off because it just looks cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. But this camera's actually got a really good image. Uh, it surprised me compared to what I was expecting. And it is autofocus, I'll show you. See my hand on the screen to the side there? Uh, so the closer I get, it, it will focus. And if I go down, it'll recalibrate, it takes it a second. There you go. You can, you can see that kind of wall when, when it tries to focus. So the camera is an autofocus camera. All right, and I'm gonna put my safety glasses on and I'm gonna to try to put that dot right there. I've got to clean my machine though because all this construction and it has got nasty. So if you hear it grinding and crackling, y'all spare me with the hate mail on that. All right, so I did the burn. I am going to update the overlay. And look at that, guys. Look at that. All right, and I'm just going to go over here to my cuts, and I'm going to turn that cut off and then back on. That's pretty close. Pretty close. All right, so I'm going to move the dot. Now I'm going to move my piece. Here I am over here. Move it in piece, we'll move it over to the left. Update my overlay. And I'm gonna grab my little dot. And I'm gonna do my best to take this dot and cover that dot. Now, just so I make sure I get it right. I'm gonna turn this off and on. Please come back. Keep in mind, guys, this is a three millimeter dot. This is not a huge dot. So, this is a. <laughs> ain't small, miss small, right, guys? Alright. Updating the overlay. You can see it just barely peeking out right there. But like I said, this is a three millimeter uh, circle. And I'm going to move her back over to the other side a little ways. And I'm also not going straight to the center of the uh, workspace every time. 
Uh, because I will tell you that these cameras are a lot more accurate the closer to the center of the workspace you are if you're positioned directly above it. I have figured that part out. Um, the further you get from the center of the workspace, right below that camera, the more uh, variation it tends to get. But we got it covered up pretty decent and I'm going to fire it. Like I said, I'm aiming at a three millimeter target here, guys. So you can see the screen here. Overlay. And like I said, it, it is, is it 100% accurate? No. But guys, that's that's like straight off the uh, straight off the adjustment. That's no correction, no nothing. So let me show you what I'm where I'm at here. So you're looking at. You know, if, if, if this were a group, they're touching. So that's good enough. We are definitely subbed in the angle. So I'm going to move it over here. I am going to re-update my view there. And we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to take a change. Well, we're going to do my little circle. I'm going to do my circle. I'm going to do circle. We're going to change this up. I'm going to turn that into a cut. And I am just going to go and put that cut on top of our other shots here. I'm going to cut that guy out. Oh, my air assist with my controller go. Yep, I forgot to remount my controller for my air assist gun. Yeah. Alright. Update overlay. And as you can see, guys, I mean, that is really, really, really close. All right, guys, I just want to do a quick closure to the video, and uh, I decided to do it inside. I've had enough. I'm soaking wet and uh, sweaty, and I'm going to try to get this video put together where y'all can uh, take a look at it. But I will be dropping a, a link to the camera in the description, but just keep in mind, I've had this camera for a couple of weeks, three, and I've been playing around with it and testing it. And it seems to be doing a pretty good job. Uh, it took me a while to get confident enough with it to take my Logitech out and replace it, but luckily I now have a Logitech inside the house on my computer desk that I use to do my inside work. And so that's what I'm talking to you from now here in the, uh, the living room. So, uh, but I hope the video helps you out, maybe gives you some ideas. Uh, you know, it's just a, a little homemade enclosure, but my vacuum table seems to be working just fine. Camera's working good. I like the lower profile camera. It's pretty neat. And uh, I got a camera inside now. So if I want to do something inside, I've also put my screen capture software and light burn on my computer inside because I discovered that you can have two computers with your light burn license, which is a benefit when it's 100 degrees and you don't want to stay outside and, uh, and build designs. I can do them in here now and save them to my network folder that I use from the shop and boom, I'm good. So, but anyway, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and I appreciate everybody and have a good day.